it's a better video. All right, ready? <laughs> Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today I have, a, we're following up with one of my favorite clients and friends. This is Michelle Maple, and she has gone in her first 14 months, zero to six figures, and she's done nothing but crush it since. So we are going to follow up with Michelle. Michelle, well, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Everyone already knows your name and your face because you've been on the show before. You're an active member in our hub. You're always at the workshops and helping and everything else. So thank you again for your time and your energy here. And I just really want to get to it and see, you know, how have you grown? So let's go way back. You started okay. your business September of 2018 and you were doing retail arbitrage. Is this correct? All right. Okay, yes. So tell us, just give us a little refresher. How, how is, I mean, it seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah, it does. It does. So many things have changed, right? Okay. So tell right, me back to that right. first when you first started and you first started your business. So yeah, I started, um, I, I heard you on a podcast that summer and I signed up for the classes and I, I went through, did all the trainings. And, um, after that, I, I found some inventory and I launched and um, literally, I don't even know if I've shared this piece with you before, but um, as soon as I launched the store, we were launched the stuff I started. Um, we were leaving on a vacation. We were taking our, our girls to Disney World. And so I was literally in Disney World when my, my phone dinged for the first time and I had a sale and it was like, well, this is pretty cool. Here I am in the happiest place on earth and, and I'm selling something. And, and uh, I'm having fun with my family. Oh my gosh, I right. love that story. I do because that literally is kind of the definition of what we want our business to be like, right? We have this idea right. that's like, oh, right. we're totally going to Disney World. So that is so fun. Yeah. I love that you shared that. So it kind of, it kicked off fun. Um, and yeah. So when, when you were at first, you started out with retail arbitrage, but you start, I remember you sharing in the last time that you, um, you realized quickly that like, although this is fun and the shopping and the profits are fun, you're like, there's kind of got to be a, a easier, better way to do this. And so I know not shortly after you started your business, you came to the wholesale bundles workshop. So, um, what prompted you to, to realize so soon in your business that you were going to already need a change? I think I just, after I went through and did the wholesale bundle class, I just, you know, was all in. And that was, that was the business model that I just really wanted to execute and do and um, running store to store and trying to find this and trying to find that and just spending all the time trying to get enough stuff to sell. It just was exhausting. And so um, I came to, I came to the the live workshop that January, as soon as Christmas was over and just decided if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go in all going to go all in and just, you know, try to do it the right way. Um, so I met you January of 19 and um, just instantly kind of made that transition and switch to wholesale um, it was a great transition because not only did I get the hands-on training and the live training and um, executing all of the things that you teach, but we were also at the trade show to be able to find product and wholesalers and make those connections. So it just kind of all came together that January and then um, over the course of 2019 just worked more towards bundling and less towards running errands <laughs> <laughs> running errands that's a great way to put that because sometimes i mean some people my mom actually joined my business at the time where we were doing retail arbitrage because that was the appealing part to her she already enjoyed shopping but she's like i need nothing i don't need to spend money on things i don't need or whatever but i enjoy this process looking creative buying things and so that helped at first but she gets her her creative outlet now from creating bundles rather than the shopping part she's like i guess i just like to put pretty things together and you know curate that stuff so it's like that outlet for her um, creativity. Do you find that that's similar to you or is it really just all business mode? Like I just want to do well, make money, do all that. Or is there a creative side that you enjoy too? Yeah. I mean, I think both. Uh, I think when I first heard your podcast, I was like, what? They shop and then they sell what they buy. I could totally do that. <laughs> and 
Um, so I do love the shopping aspect, but I also love the creative side of it too. And trying to, you know, figure out things that go together and um, not always necessarily pretty things either. Just sometimes it's the challenge of, oh, what can I, what can I put with this so that somebody else isn't, you know, selling the same thing? What can I do to make it different? So I think I just really enjoy the the challenge of it, sometimes the pretty stuff. Um, and the the research, I really get into that too. Yeah, I find that, you know, some people, it's like a love-hate relationship with, re- with research. I love research. I feel like it's uh, un- it's discovering new things and figuring out problems and figuring out what goes together. And I like the puzzle pieces of that. So right. research is definitely an element that you have to learn to enjoy if you don't, um, simply because it, it's a big part of the process. But there's always that, that moment where things click together and you're like, this is the one and this is, you know, doing well. So let's fast forward a little bit. So you got bundles, you had things going on there and, you know, you did have some, some partners with your um, family. Talk a little bit about that. Cause I know you're transitioning even. So we're going to talk about all your pivots because I would think what, what's really important what people need to know is that even from the very beginning, all the way to, you know, you're just several years in that there's tons of pivots along the way at, as you realize you're getting into this, you like this, you don't like this, you want to work this way, you don't want to work this way. So tell us a little bit about your, your business structure and the partners and employees and things like that that you had that you're you know transitioning from sure uh so much like disney world it started with this big you know excitement uh but when you come home from disney you kind of have that let down well the business is kind of like that too we have those really high highs and then we have those really low lows too because unfortunately every day isn't uh isn't disney world <laughs> so Uh, Yeah, I started this business. My mom and my sister were my partners and um, my sister has another full-time job. So a year ago, she decided that she was going to transition out of the Amazon business and just she needed more time for her kids and focusing on her family. So my mom decided to stay on. But at that time, we kind of transitioned um, her into more of an hourly role and less of, um, you know, a business partner, I guess. So at that time I pivoted into becoming a one man show and continuing to have people working with me, but a a little bit less, um, you know, teamwork in that way. Um, you took more of a leadership CEO type role rather than a partnership role where everyone kind of has equal opportunity. Um, you right. Took, took a little bit more control and decided this is kind of how I want things and how can we fit everybody into that? And so how has that been working since you've made that transition? Yeah, I mean, I would say I would say it's taken a full year to kind of wrap my head around all the pieces and uh, to really try and get things the way I want it. Um, you know, at first when my sister first left, I, I felt like all I did was work. I worked every day, all day. And I was trying to do my stuff and I was trying to do her stuff. And, um, it just quickly got to a point where it was like, okay, I can't do this. So then I actually, I actually decided to scale back my business because I wasn't willing to do the same work that we were doing as a team. So trying to scale back and be okay with scaling back, that was kind of hard too, because it was like we were putting up certain numbers and then watching those go down was hard. But in the same breath, it was a better balance for me. Um, I love that you took the time to not only recognize that, but save yourself rather than the business. I mean, I really, that's something to be said about that because I think too, as women and as business owners, we tend to think we have to be the be all catch all for everything all the time. And I think the realization is, is this what I want? And do I need to step back for a time? And stepping back does not mean failure. It does not mean that we're going bad or going in the wrong direction. It, it, it You actually gave yourself space to figure out the next step while the numbers are dropping. And that's perfectly okay. As a matter of fact, that's awesome and healthy to where most people try to juggle it all at the same time and grow and figure out what they want next and change partners. And, you know, it's okay to give yourself that wiggle room to be like, I need to breathe and figure out if this is still what I want. And and, and if so, in what capacity? 
Definitely. And I think that um, I think that that's part of the pivots that come with this business. I do think that, you know, you start in this place of, oh, I want to sell stuff and you start selling and then, you know, you you've you've got to figure out where and how much you can do by yourself. And then at what point do I hire people and at what point do I outsource? And so I think it's just there's lots and lots of pivots and and it's very turbulent. It changes all the time. And I think if you're going to go into this, you kind of have to be okay with that Um, and giving yourself that permission. And I, I think that when, I think one of the things that I've learned is the parts of the business that I try to just push through and force are the ones that come back to smack me upside the head and say, nope, you didn't do this right. And that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. And that's great to recognize too. You know, do you give yourself a specific, because I'm finding like, this is such a healthy way to do business and how you're going forward and how you're giving yourself the time and space and energy to not be rushed, but to actually think, what do I want and how do I want it? And where do I want it? And if it's not going well, okay, to, to pump the brakes and, and shift gears. And so how are you able to, you know, do you give yourself a certain space and time to think these things over? Do you have a specific mentor or, you know, your husband or someone else that you kind of just talk all these things through with because it's just you're you're just so solid I just I love I love (laughs) that you have this wisdom of just like being okay with stepping back and changing so many people are so averse to change that they still continue trying to force it until it it works I mean I think that I mean obviously I am you know very close to following everything that you do and I take all the trainings and courses and um I think that, you know, I also work with you monthly for coaching. I consider you a fabulous mentor and I definitely wouldn't be where I am without you. So thank you for that. Um, I think that, you know, what you teach, it is very doable, but I think that you also have to, you know, find that balance for your life. Um, When you work from home and when you work for yourself, you do have to find that balance and it's, it's not always perfect and it's not always right. Um, I just, I don't know. I just keep trying. Um, but like I said, you know, when I force things, those are the bundles that don't sell and I have to bring them back and say, okay, why didn't this sell? And, you know, because I'm at a point now where I can't just say, oh, get rid of it. And we'll try something different. You know, when something doesn't sell now, I, I got to figure out why it's not selling and why it didn't sell and figure out how I can, you know, try it again. And um, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I didn't do all of the steps. I didn't, I didn't list it and then go back to double check that all the keywords were there, or I didn't list it and make sure that it's actually listed because that's my, you know, the last year I've had several listings that I put it out there and I think it's good. And then all of a sudden I realize that when I click on the Amazon link, it takes it to me. But if I take the actual ASIN and click it in, it's not there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of touch points on certain things, the checking, the double checking, the making sure that, you know, we can't always trust that Amazon is going to upload or do things the right way. And we have to keep them accountable as well. So there's lots of moving parts and pieces of it. Right. And I think that um, I think that just kind of having your own checklist of what you need to do and how often, you know, works for you based on what you have. Um, but like I said, it's just doing all the little pieces. And I mean, I don't love every piece of it. A lot of times it's like, I wrote the listing, I did the pictures, boom, I just want to put it out there and be done. And I, like I said, it's just, you know, it always comes back to, to get me when I try to skip some of those steps. Yeah. Um, It's like doing the initial work on something and then we have to maintain it. We have to make sure it's not just like a sudden and forget it. We have to take care of what we've you know, put together to make sure it's not just like falling into a black hole because sometimes on Amazon things do that or bullet points disappear or images look wonky. And like, unless we're checking that, we really don't know. Right. Right. And I think that, you know, too, as Amazon grows, I'm finding more and more people, you know, jumping on your stuff and, um, you know, getting, 
I've even found my listings where they've not only copied, uh, you know, word for word what I've written, but they've just copy and pasted my pictures too. Yeah, um, it's really pretty. You know, some some I always say that like if these hijackers and these lazy competitors would just spend the energy that they spend copying from us on their own listings, they might actually do better. It's just yeah. like instead they're copying and pasting. I mean, and of course. That's the highest form of flattery to somebody to, to copy you and be like, oh, you did such a great job. Let me do that. But we're still offended and annoyed and doing our best to protect our listings from these lazy competitors. Sure. Um, yeah, it's just it's part of it. And that's true. I think, you you know, that's like for every business. I mean, we want to be able to do what we love and have the control and freedom to you know, do things and on certain days, you know how it is, you know, this is just life. You know, people ask me that too. They're just like, how do you manage all these things? And you have two businesses and you have this and that. I'm like, well, you have to, it's a very big ebb and flow, right? It's just like, okay, like, you know, one day there might be an event with a child that you just have to deal with, or there's an emotional issue or, you know, something comes along, but then you just stack it on the other days when you're in, in that's the freedom of it, right? Is that you don't necessarily have to show up at a nine to five, regardless of what's happening in real life. You just show up and do your job, whatever. This is like a, there's a lot of grace and flexibility to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Now for you, um, do you ever struggle at all with like motivation and keeping yourself going? Cause I know some people are just gung ho and they're fine, you know, motivating themselves and other people really lag and struggle. Where are you on that fence? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I ebb and flow. I think that, uh, for the most part, I feel pretty driven and, um, you know, I, I really like what I'm doing. So it kind of makes it easy to stay motivated in that aspect. But, you know, when the, when my accountants messaged me for the second time of, uh, hello, still need those numbers. It's like, oh yeah, I guess I really should deal with that because <laughs> I haven't yet. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you just have to be in the moment. If it's one of the things I found working from home is that my family is always there. My business is always there. Um, we still do all of our prepping and shipping. Uh, I don't do it, but my husband has kind of taken over that part. Um, my uncle is working with him. My son's now working with him. They all do that, but, it, and it's good and it's bad. It's, you know, giving jobs for family members, but that's one more piece of the business that is here. Yes. Um, so I do feel like there's a lot of hats and it is hard to escape. Um, I just, I try to tell myself whatever, whatever piece or whatever moment I'm in, just trying to be in that moment because I'm not going to do anything very well if I'm not, you know, if, if I'm trying to write a listing and, you know, in the background are my girls saying, mom, let's go do this, that, whatever, you know, if I can pause that listing, go fill their cup and then come back to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just trying to, you know, be in the moment. And as far as staying motivated, I mean, I really like it. I really enjoy it. Um, I do love working from home, you know, the, the whole pandemic happened and everyone was like, oh my gosh, I'm home all the time. And I was like, that's kind of what my life is all the time. Yeah, I'm like, actually kind of like, welcome to my world. I can actually Welcome to like my it. own pandemic. This is where I live and work. Well, and the thing about that is, and I mean, the, the struggle is real. Let's just be honest. Like with moms, we just have... Um, and I'm not saying that men don't have different, they just have different responsibilities and, you know, in a sure. situation like that. So I'm not, you know, making a gender statement by any means. I just mean that like in general, you know, you and I both, we've been ho stay at home moms at, at, at some point, even though the kids are grown mostly now, we have one younger one in the house still, yep. uh, we still have to, like you said, fill their cup and be with them, but also set those boundaries to be like, okay, like with my daughter she comes home at about four o'clock from school and um in the summer she does camp so she you know she loves camp and she comes home at four o'clock so i know like within that 30 minutes that she gets home there's this like transition period we're like okay i'm wrapping up work you're doing this and so i i set those boundaries to like i won't say not i'll say not now but this time like at six o'clock i'll be ready to take you to the park to go get froyo to you know play outside whatever it is but like setting those boundaries and i think it's great example for them to show them that we 
can do both, but it's not always, there's always going to be a push pull. Like sometimes right. like Q4 or this time of year for me is the busiest. Most people are busiest in Q4 if they're doing retail arbitrage, but in Q4, I'm doing fun stuff because I do all the work now, right? To get all this yes. in. So yes. this is, I love summer and I, and the summer is so short here in Michigan that I really do my best to try to get as much as I can done like before 2 PM so that I can enjoy a day in the summer and the pool and the beach and all that and have that. But there are other times where I'll have to work into the night because I choose to go to the beach all day and then I still have to work. So, you know, it's, right. it's, it's that balance and sometimes we work more and sometimes we work less. And I think the more we establish that too, for our children, they respect it. They don't, they, yeah. they don't resent it. They actually respect it and say, look, mom's chasing a dream. Mom's doing what she wants and what she loves. And she still loves me and has time for me. And, you know, we making those balances. And so, um, yeah, that's been a challenge over the years to try to, to make that fit and work. But the reality is, I think sometimes we make things more urgent and more important than maybe they need to be. And once we sure. kind of click into that balance of like, is this really 911? Is it not? Right. And if, if so, you know, we can handle those things appropriately. So. Right. So, how has, so what are your goals now for the rest of this year? So we're in July, um, uh, in almost in the end of July, and we've got almost half the year left, but of course Q4 is coming. So with all these pivots and you being a one-man show now, um, with some help, of course, I know you mm -hmm. mentioned a prep center at some point. I know you've mentioned private label. Like what, what's going on in your, in your world now that you're pivoting to? Uh, yeah, so we've we've started with some private label. We've started launching a couple of different things, trying to kind of test those um, where the market really is. It's very small, very niche items, but um, you know, trying to figure out our place with that. So working on that. Um, also, just you know, gearing up for holidays. Um, most of our Halloween is already out and shipped and we're working on Christmas stuff now and Christmas in July is different meaning in our house. <laughs> um, summers are definitely hard and a challenge, but I think that, you know, it's just like you said, I, I oftentimes just incorporate my kids into it and say, listen, I have to work for two hours and you can either find something else to do or you can help me um, if that's, you know, if that's an option. I do find that I try to get up really early and use those quiet hours of the house to get the work done that I really need, you know, my, my quiet space and my thinking space for. Um, but the rest of the day, I just try to I try to do the things that they can help or be incorporated with, or as they need me, I can still be available. Um, but I definitely work a lot less in the summer. And I think that, you know, moving forward, I am, you know, just kind of finding my way and really trying to just put out better listings so that the research that I did is hopefully getting you know, the visibility that I think it should. It's definitely not uh, easy. Um, but I think that I, I think the biggest thing is setting up some sort of a schedule, which sounds weird because you're at home and you, you don't have a schedule, but finding a schedule, finding a routine and whether it's, you know, by the hours of the day or by the tasks that need to be done or the amount of time you have or, you know, whatever it is, I think you just, you have to find that balance for you and execute that. I think that's so important because I never want, I was never a planner I'm not a super crazy planner all the time. I'm a little bit more of a last minute Lucy, but I have found that, like you said, like by the hours of the day or the day of the week, I tend to do like the day of the week. Like Monday is all, you know, accounting and financials. And then Tuesday is all like shipping and list, you know, things like that to where I batch things by, by task or by day rather than by hour, because sometimes like, you know, things, some things take longer than others. So I'm like, this is a whole day. Or I'm like, okay, this is a FBA like inventory day and it's everything inventory. And then the next one is going to be accounting and everything numbers. And sometimes yeah. it only takes a few hours, but. Um, right. Right. So I tend to do the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, having, like you said, um, if, if people that are hub members, I know you're an expert in our hub already. And like just having people there, there's, there's that 
FBA task list that we have in there that like is so crucial sometimes to be like, if you're not sure what to do and when, you can take that and plug it into your your um, calendar and just say, okay, on these days, I'm just doing these tasks. And it just makes it easier for yourself, it, especially right. for those people who lack motivation or aren't as driven for whatever reason. And of course, that's seasonal too. Like when I say seasonal, I mean, like, you know, every, to you know, there's, always a season for something. Sometimes you're right, happier than right. others or things are going on or you're healthy or you're not healthy or, you know, things like that going on. So um, just choosing those times and, and, and giving yourself a little grace to be like, okay, today right. Tuesday might not be this day, but I have to do it this way. But um, I think you're right with it when it comes to routine and schedule, because it takes the thinking out of it. Like if you already know that Wednesdays are, you know, shopping days or shipping days, then you don't have to think about that ahead of time, which then can save your good brain power for the things you need it for right right I I even have it written down and I I just have a, like a little note on my desk in that way because sometimes I feel like I sit down to my desk too and I it can go one way or the other sometimes I think ah, where do I begin there's so many things and and then I'm just kind of scattered half-heartedly doing a bunch of them and then the other days you know I sit down and I'm like Oh, okay. What should I be working on today? So I find that just having like a general outline of some certain tasks, like you were saying this on Monday, this on Tuesday, it's just really helpful to get me in the mindset of what do I need to do today? And what do I need to get done? really, really great advice as far as that goes, because whether you're someone's a planner or a last minute person, at least having a list of tasks that you have. And if anybody, uh, if you guys don't have that or you need that, first of all, we have it in the hub. So if you are a hub member, you already have access to that. Look up the FBA task list. But if you're not and you're a wholesale bundle student, you can join the hub and you can chat with people like Michelle and I. And I know that Michelle might have in the future, this is just a little hint, but she might have some coaching under her belt of her own. And so stay tuned for that because she is uh, used to be a teacher by trade so she's got that natural thing in her and she's got a wealth of knowledge that she's accumulated lots of things that she's in trial and error and tested and proven and have become successful so tell us a little bit now I know we don't always share numbers and you don't have to share numbers if you don't want to but like I know that you have been you know year over year been growing and growth so what what are some of your goals for the end of this year for Q4 your year-end sales if you don't mind sharing yeah, so um, I think that I, I think that we, you know, when we started this, it was about it was about a number and it was about sales, and you know, we wanna we wanna do fifty thousand, we wanna do a hundred thousand, we wanna do two hundred fifty thousand, and um, I think that one of the things when my sister and my mom pivoted out, one of the things that I kind of changed my focus on was less about quantity and more about quality. Um, because I find that if my accuracy and the quality of the work that I do, it's naturally going to be a better quantity at the end of the day. Um, you know, we, we're definitely going to do six figures. Well, we've already done six figures this year. Uh, so we're definitely going to do that. I think that one of the things, one kind of goal that I have is I would love to do six figures in the fourth quarter. Awesome. Um, just the fourth quarter alone. So we came really close last year um, and that was on a year with a lot of pivots and transitions. So, um, you know, something fun that I do wanna try, I'm hoping we can do it this year, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I found that the last year just really slowing down and really focusing in on the quality of the work because I think that we can busy ourselves all day we can be distracted with all the things because there are so many pieces and they change. I mean, they change all the time. And so, um, you know, just being diligent about that, it, it's definitely, there's definitely a lot of room to continue learning and growing all the time. Um, but yeah, Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I'm constantly learning new stuff too. And then I can't wait to like show it to other people and help them like, oh, this one, sometimes you can hear one thing that can change the trajectory of everything you're doing, you know? And so right. I love though your commitment to excellence. I can't say that enough. As a matter of fact, those that are listening, 
literally just consider that. Give yourself 10 or 15 minutes to consider how you can become more excellent at the tasks that you have and looking and concentrating on, I mean, you said quality and I think of that just like putting your full excellence into smaller things. So instead of going hard and fast and doing all the things, slowing down and doing something with excellence because once you nail it, it's way easier to nail it the next time rather than screwing up and doing it, you know, pardon me, but half-assed and then going yeah. back and be like, you know, now I have to fix it. You know, these are the things right. that, at least in our household, we are just a very, we're very strong on work ethic here. It's like we work first and we play second and whatever yeah. we do, we do unto the Lord and we do it with excellence. Like we can do our best at everything. We might yeah. not always be the best, but we can do our best. And I think there's so much to be said about that because if you do do it excellently from the gate, then the rest will be a lot easier because you don't have to undo and make, you know, figure it out. I mean, we all make mistakes, but it's not more like it's sure. those mistakes are more recognizable and being like, okay, that happened because I rushed. You said earlier, I've skipped steps. Y'all, I skip steps sometimes too. And pride comes before a fall. Oh, I don't need to go to Merchant Words. I'm just going to use my super spidey instincts. Wah, wah, wah. When the bundle doesn't sell, it's like, remember that step you skipped? Yeah, I do it too, you guys. And the thing is, is that if we take the time to be slower and I, y'all I'm preaching to myself because I tend to be a fly by night kind of like get it done. Like, let's go. I like to get it done more so than I like to get it done the best way. So in the previous years, I've also been slowing down and realizing that, you know, it's okay to sleep on it. It's okay to look at it one more time. And then there's the crossover between the overthinkers. Then it's like, oh my gosh, they're so worried about being excellent. Right. That they don't even produce because it's so fearful to not have it perfect. So the line in there comes with, you can't sell what it's not out there. Right. And, and it I won't sell if you don't do it well. So Yeah, definitely. I, I think for the, I think for the new people and those that are overthinking, like, you have to start somewhere. You're, you're not going to learn all of this in your office by yourself with nothing listed. You know, you have to, you have to take the step forward and you have to, I feel like you have to get out there and put those bundles out there. And that's when, that's when some of your best learning happens. It doesn't happen before you send it. Um, unfortunately, sometimes your best learning happens after you send it. Um, but I think that, you know, giving yourself that permission to, I'm, I'm going to execute, I'm going to try and I'm going to see what happens. And, you know, the hub is such a great place. If you execute and you don't get the results you were hoping for, there's a lot of great people in there. And, Everybody has some different expertise in something that, you know, you can just throw it out there and people will jump in and, you know, help troubleshoot that. So um, I think giving yourself that permission to to start and to try is really important. For sure. And I think changing the perspective of it being like, okay, so if some people put a bundle out there and they lose money and they're like, oh my gosh, I lost all this money. I invested in this bundle. Rather than looking at it as like part of your training is that you're going to invest, you're going to like, what if I set up a class? I mean, I'm not really going to do this, but the idea of the, the perspective shift that you can, some people are so failure averse that they won't even try. And I guess I'm saying this for, there's a, there's a client I talked to earlier this week and she, we went over the three bundles that she put out there that were just, she's like, okay, I've tried these three bundles. Things are not working. And we went through each one of them and we're like, okay, let's look at what we can prove on. And she looked at that, like just an investment into education and training. Cause she would not have gotten the feedback if she had not been able to put these bundles out there and then be like, what's wrong with these? Or why aren't they selling? And out of the three that she did, one of them was just let's let's cut the cord we'll call it a day this one was just kind of we didn't look at the competition we didn't know what was out there and that's fine we can we were able to rescue one piece and the rest was like donation the, the second one was absolutely just a title adjustment the pictures were great the descriptions were great all these things but had she done had she not put that out there 
I wouldn't be able to help in any sort of way because she would be right. stuck in the stage of being afraid. So I think it's important to shift the perspective of thinking that if you put a bundle out there and it's not selling, you've just invested in your education. Well, you're, you can troubleshoot what's wrong, but you can't do that if you don't actually launch the product and figure it out. Right. And I, and I think that education is just, it's a critical piece of this business because not only is Amazon constantly changing, but, you know, the things that sell are constantly changing too. So um, I think that you just have to always have that mindset that it is always changing and evolving and sometimes not evolving the way you want it to. But, you know, it just, it is constant change and you do just have to, uh, you know, be prepared for that and okay with that. Right. And a lot of people that aren't, I'm just like, I'm trying to be gentle, but like, did you die? Cause you're still here. So even if yeah. like, the whole floor falls out, like, okay, let's start. You know how many times I've started again or started over or pivoted into another niche or a different type of product or something completely different or sure. a partner moves or someone leaves or, you know, it's just life is yeah. constant change constantly Definitely. and the faster we can adapt to it and figure it out even if we don't always like it we can be like how can i improve based on where i'm at now regardless of the rules i know this is coming up with people uh lately with the brand registry and how the fact that like amazon is now starting to not honor g10 exemptions for people who aren't brand registered don't say i didn't tell you so y'all and like so the pivoting yeah. even though it hurts or it might be expensive or something like that like you can pivot and change and make millions of dollars like people do on Amazon all the time. It's the ones that adapt to change faster and, and instead of pouting. Like I, I ever give everybody 15 minutes um, of a free for all pretty party. You can say, you can swear, you can cry, you can do whatever, have your moment of rage with the changes and then <laughs> move on, bury them and leave them there. And now it's like, okay, we had our pity party already. So we're not going to stay there. We're going to move sure. on and be like, how do we adapt? So, and I know you've done so well at that in your business and you are growing. I am excited to hear about your six figure Q4 this year and your private label products and everything. Listen, everyone, thank you again so much for being here, for sharing all of your wisdom, your story, your expertise. I know it takes a lot to be honest and vulnerable in front of so many people. So I really appreciate that time and energy. And listen, you guys, if you want um, more of Michelle's story, and you want to be part of the hub community um Michelle is part of that. It's been with us since the beginning, one of the founding members of our hub, and she has a lot to offer there and is always willing to be honest about advice and help and ask questions and give answers. So mommyincome.com forward slash hub. It's open for wholesale bundle students. So if you're a wholesale bundle student and you want to be in there, you can join the hub. If you're not, you can get the wholesale bundle system and six months in the hub for a special offer. So go to mommyincome.com slash system for that. And I know anyone, you guys, could be anywhere else listening to any other thing doing any other thing we don't take that for granted we're thankful that you're listening that you follow us if you have suggestions you can always email us and again thank you we'll see you same time same place next week on the amazon files